And welcome to High School Physics Explained. And today I'm going to talk about deriving the conservation of momentum by way of Newton's laws. And specifically, I'm going to refer to Newton's third law. And so I have this comical situation where I have a combi van is going to collide with my B. And to start the ball rolling, we just need to basically have set variables that we already know. We know that the momentum of our van is going to equal its mass multiplied its velocity. And in this case, I'm going to call the mass of the van M1 and its initial velocity as U1. Similarly speaking, my B, so I'm going to call this 2, is equal to its mass multiplied by its velocity. Now, I know that in this case, our combi van is going in the opposite direction of the B. But remember, our M's and the U's, and particularly our U's, are just variables. And they can be positive or negative. So what's going to happen is these guys are going to have a collision. And so we're going to have two vectors. They're going to represent the forces that they both experience. And so this is going to be the force of the combi on the B. And of course, this is going to be the force of the B on the combi. Now, Newton's third law says these two are always equal. For every action, there's an opposite reaction. But I like to say is that if the force on A on B is the same as the force on B on A, just in opposite directions, they're always equal. The second thing you need to remember, of course, is that the time for the collision is going to be the same. It goes really without saying it's not possible for the B to experience the collision at a different time interval to the combi. What that means, though, is that their change in momentum, which is their impulse, so change in momentum is always equal to the force multiplied by the time. And so therefore, the change in momentum for the B is going to be equal to negative delta mv. Now it's negative because the force is in the opposite direction. Whereas the change of momentum for my combi van is going to be equal just simply positive delta mv. Now why is that? Because of the fact that the forces are in opposite directions. So the magnitude is exactly the same, but the directions are in the opposite direction. So my new momenta of my combi van is going to be equal simply the sum of the momenta. So in other words, my new momentum for the combi is going to be its initial momentum, like so, plus the change in momentum. Similarly speaking, for the B, his new momentum is going to be equal to his old momentum, plus the change in momentum. But of course, this is negative mv. Now, the new, clearly the combi van will have a change in momentum. And so his new momentum is going to be equal to m1 v1. His velocity is going to change. Similarly speaking, for my b, his new momentum will be due to the change of velocity he experiences. And so it's going to be equal to m2 v2. He's going to have a change in velocity. But what happens is if we add the momentums before and afterwards. So if we have the total momentum, and we make this b for before, it can clearly see it's simply m1 u1 plus m2 u2. Fantastic. What about the total momentum after? Well, that's going to be m1 u1 plus delta mv plus m2 u2 plus negative delta mv. And of course, that's going to be equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2. But hold on these two cancel out. So really, my total momentum before is my total momentum after. That is the law of conservation of momentum. The total momentum before equals total momentum after, or sometimes stated as the total momentum in a system, 
where a collision occurs, remains constant. Now this is in a closed system, so we don't have external forces applying here. But this is therefore always true in closed systems. It is irrespective of the objects in question and whether they're doing. So for example, if this bee were to be stuck onto the windscreen, then the mass becomes a common mass, which is just the sum of the masses that we have over here. And they'll have a combined velocity. But the rule is still the same. The total momentum stays before. It's the same if we have an explosion. The objects have no momentum before the explosion, they're stationary. But if you add the individual momenta of the each piece as they fly off in different directions, and you were to add those together, and remember momentum is a vector, so you could do vector analysis if it is an explosion in 2D or 3D, then the total momentum stays the same. You can, And in this case, for an explosion, it's going to equal zero. So there you have it, conservation of momentum as explained via Newton's third law. Hope that has given you a little bit of a better understanding of momenta. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.